Good morning, everybody, and welcome to St. John's, and welcome to everybody joining us from the comfort of their living room. I've got quite a few announcements to make this morning. The first is to draw to your attention in the newsletter that applications are at the back for the electoral roll. If you aren't already on the electoral roll, please fill out a form and complete that and put it in the red box. There will be a short meeting of the social committee after the ser service today, just to finalise our next social event, which is next Sunday, immediately after the Mother in Sunday Mass, we're all going over to the hall and we're having a rose reception for everyone, not just mothers, not just ladies, everybody, where we'll be serving, serving some pink bubbly or there will be some non-alcoholic um, drink there and also a very small cream tea just to celebrate Mothering Sunday. So that's immediately after next week's mass over in the hall. The other thing I need to let you know, you will, some of you will have been um, seen an email that went out this morning. Our beautiful church is in need of some TLC. We have previously had cleaning rotors, particularly um, had cleaning before Advent, before Easter. And uh, because of COVID, we've not been able to do that. But next, um, next Saturday, we're going to have a cleaning party here. We need a team that will meet us after mass on Saturday morning. So that will be between half past 10 and 11 when, when the service finishes, when a team will take turns to dust and clean. And then we'd like to start that on a fortnightly basis. So if you um, are able to give some time on Saturday morning, please let me know. Sandra, Coca and Diane Wolf are actually coordinating that rotor. They aren't actually here today. So if you'd like to pass your name to me, all we'd say is whether you could bring some microfiber dusters or a duster with you and some furniture polish, the rest brushes and things and equipment we've got here for you to use. So we would be grateful if you could give some time just to, um, to, to smarten up and, and, and get rid of the dust in this building on a regular basis, so thank you. Also, we have coffee after church as we always do. James, who you'll have seen um, in the door when you came in, is working on his uh, Duke of Edinburgh award and this is part of his service, being our meter and greeter and helping out with things around the church. He had to learn a new skill for his Duke of Edinburgh Award, and he has learnt the new skill of making cookies. So a sample of those cookies are at the back for you to, to try today. So please give him your feedback on them. They look delicious. Um, the other thing I need just to remind you is that whilst the government have actually dropped the restrictions for um, the, the pandemic that we've had, COVID is still, cases are rising high. We've, we've had a few cases in our congregation, but what I would say is that we really need to celebrate our success to date because we remained open one of the, the only church in the town for the whole of the pandemic, the series of lockdowns. We were here for people from other churches when they needed us as well as, as we needed it. Um, so it really has been left by the Church of England for us to manage this locally. We'd like you to remain wearing masks unless you have a medical exemption, and there are some people that have medical exemptions, and that's understandable. Um, but also, we will continue to fling the doors open after we've been here an hour so there is fresh air in this building. And obviously, we need to leave it to you as individuals to manage how you are, um, how you behave, and socially distance. So it, it will leave it to you. Um, but I think we've done really well to date to manage this and to keep open. I can hear, see a few nods in the congregation. So thank you. And I think it, it's been really important that we have, we have stayed here and been positive and carried on, um, as well as the, the benefits that have come out of our online offering. And it's amazing. We did the return for the statistics to mission recently, and we have got hundreds of people following us on a, on a weekly basis, which is amazing. Thank you very much. Okay. The first hymn is 68, 6, 8.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Welcome to Mass this morning. Welcome if you're participating via the internet. We have a number of parishioners who are suffering with COVID at the moment. Today is the third Sunday of Lent. We're halfway through our Lenten journey. I don't know if any of you heard morning worship on Radio 4. It came from St. Dominic's Church in Newcastle. And it began with this intercession, asking God, the Holy Spirit, to engage with the hearts of all who make peace and to penetrate the hearts of all those who would make war. I suggest to you, brothers and sisters, that that must be our intention this morning as the conflict continues in the Ukraine. We ask God the Holy Spirit to engage with the hearts of those who would make peace and to penetrate the hearts of those who would make war. And as we think of these things, we know that sometimes our words and our actions cause division rather than unity. And so we confess our wrongdoing as we say together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God of salvation, we stand before you on holy ground. For your name is glorified and your mercy revealed wherever your mighty deeds are remembered. Since you are holy and forbearing, turn us from every rash and shallow judgment to seek the ways of repentance. We ask this through Christ, our deliverance and hope, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, holy and mighty God, forever and ever. Amen. We sit to listen to the scriptures. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was looking after the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, priest of Midian. He led his flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. 
There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in the shape of a flame of fire coming from the middle of a bush. Moses looked. There was the bush blazing, but it was not being burnt up. I must go and look at this strange sight, Moses said, and see why the bush is not burnt. Now the Lord saw him go forward to look, and God called to him from the middle of the bush, Moses, Moses, he said. Here I am, he answered. Come no nearer, he said. Take off your shoes, for the place on which you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your father, he said, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this Moses covered his face, afraid to look at God. And the Lord said, I have seen the miserable state of my people in Egypt. I have heard their appeal to be free of their slave drivers. Yes, I am well aware of their sufferings. I mean to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians and bring them up out of that land to a land rich and broad, a land where milk and honey flow. Then Moses said to God, I am to go then to the sons of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. But if they ask me what his name is, what am I to tell them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. This, he added, is what you must say to the sons of Israel. The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name for all time. By this name, I shall be invoked for all generations to come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The 102nd Psalm, and the response is, the Lord is compassion and love. The, the Lord, Lord is, is compassion, compassion and, love. and love. My soul, give thanks to the Lord. All my being, bless his holy name. My soul, give thanks to the Lord and never forget all his blessings. The my Lord is, is compassion, compassion and, love. and love. It is he who forgives all your guilt, who heals every one of your ills, who redeems your life from the grave, who crowns you with love and compassion. The, the Lord, Lord is, is compassion, compassion and love. love. The Lord does deeds of justice, gives judgment for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to Israel's sons. The, the Lord, Lord is, is compassion, compassion and love. And love. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so strong is his love for those who fear him. The Lord, the Lord is, is compassion, compassion and love. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I want to remind you, brothers and sisters, how our fathers were all guided by a cloud above them and how they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in this cloud and in this sea, all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink, since they all drank from the spiritual rock that followed them as they went, and that rock was Christ. In spite of this, most of them failed to please God, and their corpses littered the desert. These things all happened as warnings for us, not to have the wicked lusts for, for forbidden things that they had. You must never complain. Some of them did, and they were killed by the destroyer. All this happened to them as a warning, and it was written down to be a lesson for us who are living at the end of the age. The man who thinks he is safe must be careful that he does not fall. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, you are the Word of God. Praise to you, O Christ, you are the Word of God. Repent, says the Lord, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some people arrived and told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood. Pilate had mingled with that of their sacrifices. At this he said to them, Do you suppose these Galileans who suffered like that were greater sinners than any other Galileans? They were not, I tell you. No. But unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 on whom the Tower of Siloam fell and killed them, do you suppose that they were more guilty than all the other people living in Jerusalem? They were not, I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. He told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it, but found none. He said to the man who looked after the vineyard, Look, here, for three years now I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and finding none. Cut it down. Why should it be taking up the ground? Sir, the man replied, leave it one more year and give me time to dig round it and manure it. It may bear fruit next year, if not, then you can cut it down. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Oh Please sit down. Anthony de Mello tells a lovely story of a rich industrialist who was on vacation in Southeast Asia. Late one morning, he was horrified to find a fisherman lying lazily beside his boat, smoking a pipe. Why aren't you fishing? said the rich industrialist. Because I have caught enough fish for the day, said the fisherman. Why don't you catch more? What would I do with it? You could earn more money, came the reply. With that, you could have a motor fixed to your boat and go into deeper waters and catch more fish. Then you would have enough to buy nylon nets. These would bring you even more fish and more money. Soon you would have enough money to buy and own two boats, maybe even a fleet of boats, then you would be a rich man like me. 
The fisherman looked puzzled. What would I do then? He said. Then, said the rich man, you could really enjoy life. The fisherman smiled at the rich industrialist. What do you think I am doing right now? We're halfway through our Lenten journey. And Lent is a time for taking stock, for getting our priorities right for working out what is of real value to us and what isn't. In our second reading, Paul reflects on how the people of Israel had forgotten the intimacy of their relationship with God and their corporate responsibility. He was dealing with a testing time for the emerging church in its dealings with the world, in relationships, and ultimately with God. But in this reading, Paul is referring to a process of getting our priorities right and working out what is of real value to us. And Paul, you heard, reflects back to the time of the Exodus and the testing time for Israel in the wilderness. Testing demands action, not just resistance. Jesus knew all about testing times. The Gospel reading, which begins with reference to some historical events that we know little about, also refers to corporate responsibility. How the actions of a few can affect the whole, and the actions of whole groups of people can compromise the life of an individual. Unless you unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Now, repentance is a kind of turning around. It's a metanoia, to use the Greek word. Turning around, working out what it is of real value. And this is the challenge Jesus gave to his hearers, and he gives it to us today. Making the right choices, discovering what is of value, Knowing our place in the community of faith, these are marks of the kingdom of God breaking in, demanding action. As I reflected this past week on our own corporate life here at St. John's and our responsibilities to each other and to the church in this place, I was particularly struck by the parable that Jesus told. Now, if you are a gardener, there's many here I know, then you will know that it normally takes three years for fig trees to grow to maturity and begin fruiting. The owner of the vineyard in the parable is therefore quite right to ask for this tree that does not bear fruit to be uprooted because three years old it's draining the soil of energy and of course fig trees are prolific in their growth and can soon take over their spot of the garden but something remarkable happened 
hands. The gardener has faith. The gardener wants to nurture the fig tree. Not uprooting it from the soil will ironically mean enriching the soil with manure to fertilize it. However, it will undoubtedly also need pruning. This is a living and growing church and we need to cultivate it and nurture it. And this is a corporate responsibility. It doesn't belong just to me. Yes, pruning often has to happen in order for there to be growth, but I want us to be in control of our pruning and not find that our financial situation, which is, let's face it, hand to mouth, dictates drastic measures. We are a church that is rich in so many ways, rich in faith, rich in a beautiful building, rich in our liturgy, rich in the talent around this church, rich in the ability of the people sitting here or listening to the live stream, but there's very little money for us to do anything creative with for reaching out and mission. And we cannot be a church that relies simply on the generosity of those who are now dead. In this next year, my second as your parish priest, we need to think hard about what we value and what we are taking for granted. I said earlier that Lent is a time for taking stock, for getting our priorities right and working out what is of real value to us. So perhaps this is a spiritual exercise for each of us this week, including me, some questions to reflect on. These are testing times for us here. How do we at St. John's respond to the world around us? To the diocese, the Church of England and the Anglican Communion, to the people of this town critically, this is the town church. To those who have differing opinions to us. And how do we collectively take responsibility for the mission and ministry here that is St. John's Church to which we belong? Let us proclaim the faith we share. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and to the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray now to our Heavenly Father. Hear, O Lord, our intercession. Bless the nations with a thirst for the healing waters of your love. We pray that this love may permeate those who seek to wage war against those at peace. Teach us to guard against waste of the riches you have given to the earth and strengthen our resolve to bring relief where there is human need. Lord, in your mercy, save the church from becoming slothful and complacent. Keep us mindful of judgment while we rejoice in mercy. Free your people from the sins that would separate them from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide your bishops. We pray for Bishop Martin of Chichester, who has Episcopal oversight of this parish currently, and Bishop Ruth of Taunton, with additional diocesans and tasks at this time. We pray for Father Brendan as he leads us, supported by Father Robert and John. Lord, in your mercy, give grace to us, our families and friends, to resist temptation and stand firm in the power of faith. Bless us in our work so that we may seek the goals that will bring benefit to many. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for those who have no shelter at this time, those who live in Kenmore Drive, and for those who work within the boundaries of our parish. Be with them this week in their daily lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Have mercy on the victims of disasters and conflict across the world, especially those in Ukraine, Afghanistan and Yemen. Visit and relieve those who suffer from human cruelty and make merciful the hearts of oppressors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with those who are ill at home or in hospital. 
we can continue to call to mind all those affected by COVID. We pray particularly for those who've asked for our prayers, remembering Anne, Claire, Mike, Julie, Pauline, Roy, David, Jane, Julia, Cara, Maria Teresa, Derek and Beryl, Sharon, Dorothy, Evie May and family, and Shirley. Be with them in their illness, that they may feel your spirit alongside them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for those who have, have died suddenly and unprepared. We pray also for those who have recently passed away, remembering Marjorie Payne and Tony Ring, and those whose anniversary of death falls at this time, remembering Vera Barbara Brimble. Grant them pardon for their sins, that they may rest in peace and be blessed with eternal life. Rest eternal grant to them, O Lord. And let thy perpetual shine upon them. And now in a moment or two of silence, we offer our own prayers, concerns and thanks to our Lord and ask those petitions be joined with those of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint John, patron of our parish, and all of God's saints. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Please stand. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We share that peace with one another appropriately. Peace. Peace. And the offertory hymn it's number 461, and you might have noticed that a hymn board has appeared over there in the last uh, window before the north door. So if you don't get what I said, you can look there. 461.
Blessed be God, who feeds the hungry, who raises the poor, who fills our praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise. Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline, we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer, and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world, and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendor of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and singing. you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice with praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup 
and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, of John the Evangelist, the beloved disciple, our patron, with the apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father and the words our Saviour gave us. Lord, we pray from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Brothers and sisters, we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. 
Corpus Christi and Custodia with each other.
Let us pray. Merciful Lord, grant your people grace to withstand the temptations of the world, the flesh and the devil, and with pure hearts and minds to follow you, the only God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In number 368, guide me, O thou great Redeemer. For a moment. So this evening at half past five we have the third of our Lenten lectures on the icons. They're really outstanding. I'm learning so much stuff. So I hope that even if you can't be here this evening you'll uh, watch them on the internet. Uh, they really are quite remarkable. Um, David knows so much about them. It's absolutely astonishing. Uh, Tuesday and Saturday we have Stations of the Cross after the 10 o'clock service. And this coming Friday is the Feast of the Annunciation of Our Lord. It's always very strange in the depths of Lent to be plunged back to the moment of our Lord's conception with uh, uh, the Archangel Gabriel's visit to Mary. So there's a 10 o'clock Eucharist and there's a 7.30 p.m. Uh, solemn Eucharist uh, chance to observe Lady Day, which is a feast day, so the rigours of Lent uh, do not do not occur next Friday. That's it, I think. Let's ask for the Lord's blessing. The Lord be with you. May God give us grace to grow in holiness, to deny ourselves, to take up our cross and follow Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, Come down upon you to dwell deep within you this day and forevermore. Amen. The angel of the Lord brought tidings to Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And the Word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. We beseech you, Lord, pour your grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his passion and cross, may we be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>